Someone once said, with great power comes great responsibility. This is true in the supervisory arena as well. We've invited Ms. Debbie Clark to tell us about both supervisor and employer responsibilities. I think you could really summarize a supervisor's responsibilities in, in two very simple terms, setup and execution. Setup is setting up the structure of the organization, involves the planning phase of what you do as a supervisor, structuring the positions, assigning the duties for the employees to perform, setting performance expectations that go along with those duties, understanding and clarifying what the outcomes are that you're going to expect from that performance of those duties. Establishing rules and standards of behavior for the workplace, knowing what your parameters are going to be with respect to lots of different things, leave procedures, call in, uh, assigning work type things like that. So planning and setting up is a very key aspect of one of your responsibilities, which then leads into the execution, the actual follow through. So you've established these procedures, you've assigned the duties, you've established the expectations, the first thing, of course, is filling the vacancies, making sure that you've got good criteria for making those selections, getting the right people in the right job. That is the very key. You're not always going to have opportunities to select every member of your staff, so sometimes you're not going to necessarily start with that phase. But once you have a staff, or you assume a staff, you then communicate your performance expectations. Make sure you provide feedback, you want to reinforce and reward good performance, but you also want to correct efficiencies when they occur. Those communications need to happen on a regular and recurring basis if you're going to get from your employees what you need. Position management is another aspect of execution where you're ensuring that while you establish the structure of the organization or of the work center initially, you've assigned duties that need to be accomplished, things change over time. Sometimes they change a little more slowly than others. Sometimes they change from external factors. You've got to consistently look at position management and making sure you've got the right positions for the work that needs to be done and making adjustments where necessary, modifying duties, and sometimes that involves a complete change of, of duties. You're not always going to get the extra slots or bodies that you need to get the work done, so you've got to make adjustments where they are. And you don't want to do that strictly in the actual assignment of duties, but you need to make sure that from a position management standpoint, you address those concerns and keep them in your line of sight. Of incredible importance is to address conduct issues. Many of you will go through your career as a supervisor and not have conduct problems with any of your employees. But that's actually less common than you would think, unfortunately. None of us like confrontation. It's human nature to try to shy away from that. But if you don't address conduct issues when they arise, you're just setting yourself up for a disruptive workplace and problems continue to grow. So address those issues when they first arise. Don't save them up. Don't be afraid to have that simple conversation. You can do that without being confrontational. And it's important to make sure that you have those simple conversations and correct them. But when your early intervention is not successful, do not be afraid to take corrective action and disciplinary actions when necessary. It's very, very important. And while you may have difficulties with one employee, if you don't address them, it affects the morale of all of your employees. So you owe this to your entire work center to take care of those problems as they arise. What I want to summarize with the supervisor's responsibilities is to make sure that the key aspect of your execution, have a plan and sit down with your new employees when they arrive within the first day if possible, but no later than the second day and go through all of these different things. Your expectations as they relate to work schedules, leave procedures, behaviors, assignment of work, all these different things. You want to communicate them right up front and when you do that you show your employees that not only do you care about them but you care about the work center and make it a better place for them to be. Employees have a number of different responsibilities. Uh, obviously there are responsibilities to the supervisor, but there are responsibilities to the organization and to the agency as a whole. Uh, speaking at it from a much broader perspective, obviously uh, there are a code of ethics that apply to all federal employees that really need to be complied with. I don't think it's expected that all employees memorize and know the nine items that are covered in that federal code of ethics. Some of them, some of us may think, are actually no-brainers, uh, but some of them are a little more than that. Each new employee should be provided 
the code of ethics as part of their in-processing. Sometimes that happens within a, a broader orientation that happens within the personnel office, but other times that happens with the supervisor. They should be given the information so they are aware, because they are very important and they should not be minimized, as obvious as they may seem. But there are performance and conduct expectations that those code of ethics speak to, but that happen every day in the workplace. And employees have that responsibility to their supervisor and to the, their coworkers, to the mission and to the agency as well. Um, the code of ethics, again, as I mentioned, are, are federal code of ethics, they're government-wide, but there is also a joint ethics regulation in DOD that, employ that has other information employees should be made aware of to ensure that they uphold their responsibilities. Some of those principles of the ethical conduct, just to give an example, a full day's labor for a full day's pay. Okay? You also must make an earnest effort to put your best effort forward in the performance of your duties. You know, that no-brainer kind of no slacking type thing. Uh, discrimination is a key aspect of the Code of Ethics. We should never discriminate for any reasons that are listed in the Code of Ethics, whether that be race, religion, sex, national origin, handicapping conditions, color, any of those. Exposing corruption is actually listed in the Code of Ethics. It's one that, uh, again, many aren't aware of or don't have that conscious thought in their mind in the forefront that they're running around looking for that. But it's very important and it is expected of every federal employee to expose that when it is observed. In addition to the Federal Code of Ethics and the DOD regulation, there's also an Air Force instruction, the Civilian Conduct and Responsibility, that outlines a number of other expectations that all federal employees and Air Force employees are expected to uphold. And they relate to dress and appearance, grooming standards, if you will. They also relate to indebtedness issues and other concerns. So there's a broad number of issues that are covered in each of these regulations and employees have the responsibility to comply with them.